more than two weeks, finally rescued. We'll have the latest on their conditions. Plus, the president has picked his Supreme Court candidate nominee, what local lawmakers are saying about that candidate, and why the Dane County Farmers Market will be at a different location this weekend. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Tuesday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has a look at your first alert forecast. Nice July day out there. Yeah, not bad at all. It's not like this weekend was, or this past weekend, I should say. That, that was a 10 or 11. Yeah, that was, that was definitely <laughs> high on that scale. Today is more like a 7, but we can definitely take that because... Lower humidity is outside. Platteville looking very nice early this afternoon on the Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Lots of blue sky and sunshine. Temperatures are in the mid 80s already across southern Wisconsin, so that front did not do much for our temperatures, but that's okay. 85 in Madison, 82 in Watertown, 86 in Lone Rock, and already up to 88 in Boscobel. Dew points are in the upper 50s and low 60s. That's slightly humid, but definitely better compared to yesterday when we made it into the upper 60s for dew points. And you can see that change about 5 to 10 degrees less humid compared to this time yesterday. It actually feels a little bit less than what the thermometer may suggest in some spots, but basically feeling what the thermometer is saying outside on the heat index map. Forecast first as we head into later tonight, we're dipping through the 80s into the 60s, and that's where we're starting off on Wednesday as well with pleasant conditions, plenty of sunshine as we head into Wednesday. Humidity starts to creep back in. We'll talk more about that, plus when our next chance of some showers and storms is in your first alert forecast. We talked about it yesterday. We could use some rain. We really could. All right, Dave, we'll check back in a few minutes. Topping the news this noon, the Beloit Police Department is investigating a fatal crash that happened this morning at 1015 at the intersection of Prairie Avenue and Robin Road in Beloit. A motorcycle and minivan crashed. The driver of the motorcycle died. The identity of that driver is not known at this time. Officers are asking drivers to avoid the area for the next several hours. The dramatic rescue operation in Thailand is over. Thai Navy SEALs confirmed that rescuers pulled the last of 12 boys and their soccer coach out of that flooded cave this morning. Anna Werner has the latest. This turned out to be the third and the final day of this rescue operation to save the 12 soccer team members and their coach. 19 divers went in again and spent some eight hours to bring out the four boys and their coach and have them transported safely to a hospital. Now everyone is uh, leave uh, the cave. Okay, so I mean, do this uh, uh, plan project is a success. Water drained from the cave helped reduce the fast moving current and allowed the boys to walk in some parts previously flooded. But the path out still required each boy to swim through dark, narrow passageways flooded with murky water. Two divers guided boys while they held onto a rope. One diver in the front held an oxygen tank and another was in the back. The first four boys emerged from the cave safely Sunday and four more followed on Monday. Most were flown in helicopters, then driven in ambulances to a Chiang Rai hospital. All of the rescued boys are expected to stay in the hospital for seven days. Some of them are asking for favorite dishes like toast and Nutella, and they want to go to the World Cup. The doctor said you can watch it on TV. Anna Werner, CBS News, Maasai, Thailand. Well, President Trump's pick to fill the vacant Supreme Court seat heads to Capitol Hill today to begin the process of winning support from lawmakers for his confirmation. Judge Brett Kavanaugh is being praised by those on the right and criticized by those on the left. President Trump said he's hearing good things about his choice to fill Justice Anthony Kennedy's seat. Most Republican senators are agreeing. I think the president made an outstanding nomination. We look forward to the confirmation uh, process and it'll unfold uh, in the next few weeks. Wisconsin Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin says people need an independent justice who will not overturn the law of the land on women's health, health care for people with pre-existing conditions, and the constitutional rights and freedoms of all Americans. She says those qualities are the things that she'll be looking for while she reviews Kavanaugh's nomination. 
Someone claiming to be a Rock County sergeant has been calling residents over the last couple of weeks, the last couple of days, that is, saying he has warrants for the person's arrest. People in Rock County have reported being contacted by phone by a subject claimed to be Sergeant Egger. The scammer tells the person they call to buy prepaid money cards and give the card numbers and expiration dates over the phone. Officials said the sheriff's office will never do that. Deputies ask anybody who receives a similar call to call the non-emergency dispatch number 608-757-2244 and report the call. Well, with the art fair on the square this weekend, the Dane County Farmers Market will be moving locations for the week. The market will move to Bree Stevens Field for one week only. Along with a location change, there will also be a change in the hours. It will be open from 7 to 1. This week you'll be able to buy blueberries, the first cabbage of the season, sweet corn, Door County cherries, and more. The concessions will also be open so you can grab a cup of coffee or a beer while you stroll the market. Dane County officials have officially removed the slow no-wake restrictions on Lake Minota, Wabisa, and Kaganza today. They're removed at noon for those three lakes, but the restrictions will still be in effect in Squaw Bay on Lake Minota. The slow no-wake order was removed for the Rock River yesterday. News 3 is partnering with a local nonprofit called Today, Not Tomorrow, to help ease the burden for new parents in Dane County. It's for the Community Baby Shower. We're looking for diapers, baby wipes, formula, gently used clothing, strollers, cribs, and so on. You can drop off items for the Community Baby Shower today through Friday at Viridian Homes off the Beltline at Southtown Drive or Associated Physicians on Regent Street at South Midville Boulevard. You can also make a cash donation to the cause through PayPal, all of that information on our website, website that is channel3000.com. Up next at noon, we'll find out what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Say goodbye to boring salads and hello to one that will knock your socks off. Not literally, but it's really good. You'll see.
In the summer, we love trying all different kinds of salads. Sure, we have our favorite potato salad and coleslaw recipes, but every now and then, we want something that will really stand out. You know, a real showstopper. Well, you're in luck, because the tortellini salad we're making today is just that. We start by cooking some tortellini according to the package directions. Using a cheese stuffed tortellini works great as a simple side salad, yet it's hearty enough to be a main dish. After it's drained, we add some sliced pepperoni and salami, diced provolone cheese, and to give a color, cherry tomatoes, black olives, sliced red onions, a few artichoke hearts, and a bit of chopped parsley. Now we drizzle this with a homemade red wine vinaigrette and give it a good toss. We could serve this as is, but I think it's even better if you chill it a bit before setting it out. This summer salad has everything you could want. It's easy, it's colorful, it's tasty, and it feeds a crowd. To get the recipe for our new Italian tortellini salad, all you have to do is visit our website. And let me assure you, this is loaded with flavor. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a pasta perfect way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Ahead on News 3 at noon, not, a humid, not as humid across our area today. Dave Caulfield will have your first alert forecast when we come back. International trade tensions trigger a Tesla price hike and a chance to wipe out student loan debt. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. Wall Street extended its advance as investors turned their attention to the latest quarterly earnings season. Investors are also feeling more optimistic the economy can withstand global trade tensions. The trade battle between D.C. and Beijing is making at least one already expensive vehicle pricier. Tesla has raised the price of its cars in China by roughly 20 percent. 
The move follows China's retaliatory tariffs on U.S. auto imports. Several states are kicking off an investigation into fast food hiring practices. Officials in nearly two dozen states and the District of Columbia are probing so-called no poaching agreements. The agreements have strict terms that prevent workers from taking jobs at competing franchises. Companies in the firing line include Burger King, Wendy's, and Five Guys. Move over, who wants to be a millionaire? Now it's who wants to pay off their student loans. A new game show on True TV dubbed Paid Off is helping indebted contestants get out of the red. Three participants will answer education-related trivia questions, and one lucky winner will have their student loan debt wiped out. More than 44 million Americans are in debt due to student loans, with the average person carrying close to $37,000 in loans. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. And at the noon hour, the Dow Industrial is up 121 points. The Nasdaq up nearly six. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke is out of the radio, bar radio barn again today. So here are your ag numbers. And Dave's here. Now you could take off early today. Oh, not, not, not much going on. Yeah, not too much right now. We do have a couple of thunderstorms into um, Iowa right now, okay. but really not for us. We're not going to see much in the way of rain until maybe Thursday night, and that's just a slight chance, folks. This dry period of weather looks to continue at least for the next couple of days. Some of those storms in Iowa producing some large hail at times, but they will fizzle out and they're already fizzling out on radar well before they get to southern Wisconsin. So if you had some dreams of some raindrops today, I have to dash them. Unfortunately, July precipitation really hasn't been much except for the very first day of this month when we received about four tenths of an inch of rain. We also had a trace of rain on the fourth as well, but other than that, not seeing much in the way of raindrops falling on our head during this month so far. And if the month were to end today, this would be the second driest July on record. However, that's not how calendars work and months work. So we still do have a ways to go in this month, but off to a pretty dry start. No doubt about it. We won't be the driest July ever, but we could theoretically be the second driest July now. We are dry this afternoon, which is good news. Drier when it comes to humidity. It does feel a little bit better outside. And sometimes, you know, you want the rain to disappear and you want me to disappear. I'll be right back, folks. Downtown Madison on the Edgewater Skycam looking very nice right now. 85 degrees. There I am. Normal is 82. So we will be running a little bit above normal for this time of year. Today, that cold front really didn't do much for our temperatures. So right now we are already in the mid 80s across many spots for southern Wisconsin already at 88 in Boscoville, 84 in Platteville and 84 as well in Janesville. Dew points are better. That's for sure in the upper 50s and low 60s, which is starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable closer to spots like Platteville where that temper where that dew point temperature I should say is in the mid 60s, but comparatively it does feel a little bit better outside, especially in spots like Madison and Lone Rock where it's about five to 10 degrees less humid overall. So heat index values are pretty close to what that thermometer is suggesting. Speaking of temperatures, we will be in the mid to upper 80s basically for the next seven days, which is pretty close to normal for this time of year, but about five degrees above normal basically 
every day. Now, future tracks showing that warm and humid weather creeping back in to southern Wisconsin over the next couple of days. High pressure does help us get a little bit of sunshine on Wednesday. However, a cold front coming just a little bit closer to us on Thursday could spark some slight shower chances, especially as we head into the later portions of Thursday. Now, future track heat index looking at things not too bad over the next couple of days. It may feel a couple of degrees warmer than that thermometer is reading. However, as we head into the later portions of the work week, it will start to feel a little bit more humid outside. So that's something to keep in mind. That humidity really starts to come back, unfortunately, just in time for the weekend. Your seven day forecast showing temperatures really staying in that mid 80s range and we do have plenty of chances for showers and storms coming up into next week. Temperatures do look to cool down, but we still do have some showers and storm chances. So that driest July may not pan out if we do get those storm chances to come in over the next seven to 10 days or so. We got it's only a third done. We got time. We got time. We got time. always time. Thank you, Dave. More to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next Dr. Jim Orvik from the Oregon Veterinary Clinic is here to answer your pet questions. The number to call 270-9933. We'll get to your questions right after this. Dr. Jim Orvick from the Oregon Vet Clinic is here taking your pet questions at 270-9933. Happy July to you. Oh, well, happy nice. July to you. Summer's zipping along. Yeah. Did you have a good fourth? Yeah, I did. How about you? Yeah, I think so. Not so much fireworks oh. in our neighborhood, so yeah. the yeah. dogs weren't so... That was oh, nice. Yeah, that was good. Thank you, neighbors, for... Had them early. That's right. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Therese in Fitchburg. Hi, Therese. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. What's your question? My question for Dr. Orvik is that we have a 18 month old um, King Kevlar Charles and Boston Terrier mix who injured his spinal column back um, the beginning of April. 
And we were in Florida, and we had to take him to the emergency vet because he couldn't even walk correctly. And they did an MRI on him, and they saw that he ruptured the disc between T13 and L1. Um, They opted not to do surgery, and they opted to treat him with steroids, which we did. Um, Now that we're back home, we've been taking him to the UW for um, PT. And my question is, is it too late to have surgery on him? Um, We have been doing PT. His back, back legs seem to be getting stronger, but if he runs off leash, he still has trouble um, standing up for a long period of time, so he wears out quickly. Yeah. He, so, he, al- he also has a right luxating patella, which may need to be fixed in the future. So I'll take any advice you can give me on him. Uh, as far as surgery, it is too late. Mm-hmm. It's always within the first 24 hours that you want to do surgery. So um, at this point, it is time and uh, uh, PT and that's that's it for that. Now the patella, that can be repaired anytime. It's common in little dogs like that and, and I know this one had another one repaired already. So, And it's a young dog so... Oh yeah, he's got a lot of, a lot time. of time. And as long as he can get around and has urine and stool control, the back part is a minor and yep. he's not in pain. That's the other PT thing. PT helps. Yep. Alright, we'll go to Bob at Linden <laughs> Station. Hi Bob. Hi. Hi, which question? I have, I have um, a question for the vet, and I'm glad you're on the line, doctor. And my I have a half collie, half Newfoundland female. She's eight and a half years old. I'd like to know how long that she can live. I'm 72, so I got an older dog just for that. <laughs> but when she gets a drink of water... She'll, after she gets a drink, she'll lay down, you know, in the living room or wherever, and then she'll lick about eight, ten inches of her paw, and she only, she only seems to do it when she gets a drink, so I don't know if she's just kind of trying to cool her down with her cold tongue or what, but what do you think, Doc? Yeah, as long as there is no hair loss or anything, I think it's habit, just yeah. something she does. Just maybe washing a little bit? Right. If she is obsessed and getting bare spots, that'd be a different problem. Yep. All right, we are out of time. Thank you for calling in. Some long questions today. So if you're on the line, <laughs> stay there. Doctor will talk to you off the air. We'll see you next time. Okay. Dave has one final check of the forecast. This afternoon, temperatures will be in the mid to upper 80s with plenty of sunshine, less humidity with us. So at least that's good news. Humidity starts to creep in once again as we head into tomorrow. Temperatures starting off in the mid 60s. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock.